Hello! In this video we will make floor tiles for our game. Let's make a new blueprint actor with the name bp underscore floor tile. Now we need to open our floor tile actor. And we need to add a cube mesh here. Let's name it floor. This will be the floor our character will run on. First we need to change its scale to 10 for Y value and 10 for X value. And we need to change its position too. Let's make it lower with minus 50 for Z value in the location parameter. And we need to move it forward along the X axis with 500 for X value in the location parameter for this floor mesh. And we need to add an arrow component. Let's name it attach point. This will be a point where the next floor tile can be attached. So let's move it forward along the X axis with 1000 for X location. Now it's at the end of the floor tile. The next thing we need is a function to get a transform position of this attach point. Let's add a new function and name it get attach point. And we need to add an output value for this function. Let's set a transform type for this value. And let's name it value. Now we need to get a reference for our attach point. We need to drag this component into a blueprint editor. And we need to get a get word transform node for this attach point. And let's attach it to our value parameter here. Now we need to open our run game mode blueprint and add a new function with the name add flow. We will use this function to add a floor tile instance. We need to add a spawn actor node and select our floor tile class here. Now we need to add a new variable to store a transform position for the next floor tile. Let's name it floor attach point and change its type to transform. And we need to get its value for a spawn transform parameter of the spawn actor node. Next, we need to call a get attach point from our newly spawned floor tile actor and let's set a floor attach point value for the next tile. This is a global variable, so this um, run game mode blueprint will remember its value the next time we will call this add floor function. One more thing, let's change this get attach point function to pure for a better convenience. Now we can get its value without using an execution pins here. It's much cleaner now. Also, we need to add a new variable to store our spawned floor tile actors. Let's name it floor tiles. And let's change its type to an array of floor tile objects. Now we need to add our newly spawned floor tile to this array. Let's get into an event graph section and try to add a new floor tile here. We need to drag add floor function here and connect it to the begin play event node. This event node will be executed right after we will start playing. Now we need to open our map and remove the floor we made in the previous video. Let's play it. Our floor tile was spawned, but we are falling down. This is because our player start actor position is outside the perimeter of our spawned floor tile. 
To fit this we need to move our player start actor forward a little. Let's set its X position to 100. Let's play it again. And we are running on our spawned floor tile. The problem here is we have only one floor tile spawned right now. Let's fix it. We need to put a for loop here. And we need to add a new variable with the name num of tiles. And we need to make it a single integer type. Let's compile and set a value here with the number 3 to spawn 3 floor tiles. Now we need to get this variable and subtract 1, because we have a zero based loop here. And we need to set this as a last index in the loop. Let's compile and play it. Now we have spawned 3 floor tiles in our world. It's good, but it's not enough. We need to add new floor tiles during the run. Let's make a new extend floor function in our run game mode blueprint. In this function we will add a new tile in front of the player and remove the last one behind, because we will not need it anymore. First we need to add add floor node here. Then we need to get floor tiles array and get its length. And we need to use a greater than node to check if we have more floor tiles than we need. Let's get the num of tiles variable and add 1. In this case we will have 3 floor tiles in front of us and 1 extra tile behind. We need this extra tile to not fall down when we will remove the last one behind. Let's plug it as a secondary argument in our greater than node. Now we need to check if we have too many tiles in a branch node. If this is true, we need to remove the last tile behind the player. Let's get the floor tiles array and get the first item in this array. And let's destroy this floor tile actor to remove that last tile. And of course we need to remove this actor from floor tiles array. Now we need to get back to our floor tile blueprint and add a box collision component with the name exit box. We will use this collision box to check if the player is at the end of the floor tile to trigger our extend floor function from the run game mode. Let's move this box to the end of our floor tile and make it taller and wider. Now we need to get to a collision section of this collision box and change its presets to custom. Let's set ignore for everything except for pawn with an option overlap. This option will detect only pawn overlap, it's good for performance. And the last thing we need to do here is to set a begin overlap event for this exit box. Let's check if an overlapped actor is our run character by casting it to bp underscore run character. If cast is not failed, let's get a get game mode node and cast it to our run game mode. And let's extend our floor. Let's compile and play it. 
As you can see, we are getting new floor tiles in front of us during the run. And we are removing the last tile behind. That's all for now. In the next video, we will add lanes for our running track. I hope you like this video and it will be helpful for you. Thanks for watching.